Um, and so the way that this works, the way this acetylation works is this is my simplified model of the Krebs cycle, right? Fat and carbs are made into acetyl-CoA. They, they swirl around this Krebs cycle. And as they're doing this, they're converting NAD plus to NADH. And the thing is they need the NAD plus to go around the cycle, right? And so if you run out of NAD plus, uh, this cycle slows down. And what happens when the cycle slows down is that uh, acetyl-CoA, the thing that feeds into the cycle, increases, right? And so when you look at enzymes, this is like a, a sort of a 3D picture of this blob-like enzyme. And it has this groove in it, and that's the active site of the enzyme. That's where the enzyme is going to is gonna sort of lock and key model match with, um, you know, whatever its substrate is, and it's going to catalyze some reaction. Um, and what happens is when acetyl-CoA levels go up, the acetyl groups literally just stick to lysine amino acids in the enzyme, and that process seems to be spontaneous. It seems like we don't actually need an enzyme to make this happen. Um, it seems like uh, the acetyl groups just literally spontaneously stick onto the enzymes, and this happens all the time. But of course, as acetyl-CoA levels go up, you've got more acetyl groups around, it happens more often. And the enzymes that actually come along and they take these acetyl groups off, so so the CERT, the sirtuin family, CERT1 and CERT3, are known as NAD plus dependent deacetylases. And so their job is just to take these acetyl groups off, just like a pair of scissors would. But the catch is they can only take the acetyl groups off if they have NAD plus availability. And of course, we know the reason that more acetyl groups were sticking in the first place is we don't have a lot of NAD plus around. Furthermore, as the sirtuins do their job, they convert the NAD plus to something called nicotinamide. So as they're removing the acetyl groups, um, they're actually adding to the problem of lacking NAD+. Plus. And so you see this downward spiral happening where NAD+, plus, uh, lack in the first place, led to high uh, acetyl-CoA, led to more acetylation, led to more need for uh, CERT1, but the, but the extra use of CERT1 is continuing that downward spiral of using up the NAD+. Plus supplies um this again just to show uh nad plus levels go down cert one activities drop right the nad plus dependent deacetylase and when deacetylase activity slows down acetylation goes up um and so this study looked at age mice uh they looked at the livers of aged mice and what they find is that a lot of the mitochondrial enzymes in the aged mice become acetylated, but in particular, the enzyme NNT was markedly hyperacetylated in aged livers. And if you remember, NNT is one of the main enzymes responsible for replacing NAD plus levels. And you see again, um, this, this downward spiral into acetyl mitochondrial enzymes, because if NNT, because the whole problem is diminishing NAD plus levels. And the first enzyme that becomes acetylated and turned off is the very one that replaces NAD plus levels. Um, and furthermore, when the NA NNT becomes acetylated, that causes oxidative stress. Why does that happen? Well, because remember that NNT, in, as it's replenishing our NAD plus, what it's doing with those electrons is it's providing NADPH. And remember that electron flows, uh, the reduced NADPH, those electrons flow through reduced glutathione and they reduce hydrogen peroxide back to water. And so the less NADPH you have, the less ability you have to reduce uh, hydrogen peroxide back to water. And at the same time, um, NAD plus levels uh, are dropping. So your metabolic rate drops, NADPH drops, you can't remove ROS, NADPH levels increase. Uh, and this is reductive stress, which of course is the thing that drives oxidative stress. And this is from, uh, from the, from episode six. Um, I showed this same graph, but 
but this is uh, lipid peroxidation. So this is oxidative stress in cells that were given TCDD, right? So we activated the arrow hydrocarbon here, receptor here, um, oxidized lipids increase. But what you can see is they increase slowly for a while and then they really explode. And the point at which they really explode uh, coincides fairly tightly or perhaps proceeds a little bit um, this dropping level of NADPH. So it's possible that uh, these two events are somewhat correlated and as uh, oxidative stress is increasing, NNT is becoming acetylated and NADPH levels are dropping. Um, furthermore, if you look at obese humans and torpid animals, uh, we have highly acetylated mitochondrial enzymes. Uh, this is in children, and you can see the obese children have about a little more than double the amount of acetylated complex one. So that is the uh, that's the mitochondrial um, complex that actually oxidizes NADH to NAD plus and hands those electrons through um, to create ATP. And of course, if you have acetylated complex one and you can't oxidize NADH, this is again adding to that downward spiral of acetylation. Um, you see the torpid animals. So ENT, so this is different parts of the year. This is like summer SA is summer active and you can see the acetylation levels are at their lowest. Um, ENT is entrance into torpor. So they're getting ready to hibernate acetyl, uh, acetylation levels are going up. ET is early torpor. So as they become torpid, acetylation levels really explode. And so you see that torpid animals again, are looking a lot like 